Hello, hello, and welcome to Games Revisited. I am your host, Anand Jr. We've been doing a uh, series of interludes, a series of um, looks through the games of my youth and looking through some of the other fun stuff. We started off with a short bit on the Mario Super Mario Brothers trilogy that came out for the NES. Then we did a little run of some time wasters, and now I want to do... Um, a trio of classic side scrollers and again th this was this was your pretty much run-of-the-mill game at this point because we're only talking about an 8-bit microprocessor it was really hard to do some of the more advanced games so a lot of them did end up these uh side scrollers and what we're going to do now is take a look at a couple of them that you may have forgotten um Navigating because Retro Arch hates me. We're going to go to Dropbox. We're going to head to the NES and get to. Okay, there we go. <laughs> the one that most everybody is familiar with Mega Man. <laughs> That's right. Mega Man had its start in 87 on the Nintendo Entertainment System. This was the start of it all. And if you've played any of the subse subsequent Mega Mans, you'll notice a lot of things stayed the same throughout the run. Start, such as starting on this main screen with a selection of enemies to choose from. Um, at this point, it was still a, um, how shall we say it, a rudimentary story. I mean, there was a story, if you cared to bother. But, um, yeah, it wasn't that much of a story. I remember this game being absolutely merciless. <laughs> oh! Come on. Oh, come on. Nope, nope. This is about to be the end of me. Absolutely merciless. I should have practiced this one beforehand. Because <laughs> I never was that good at uh, the classic Mega Man for some reason. I did okay with Mega Man X, which we'll get to when we go to do the old Super Nintendo. Uh, the system that came out after the Nintendo. When uh, things finally moved from 8-bit to 16-bit. Oh! If you had the money, you could actually get a turbo controller for the NES. It holds a lot stronger resemblance to the controllers that we're used to now. That's not how you get hit points out of them. Oh, no, 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 no. Huh? There we go. I'll take what I can get. All right, down the chute. Oh yeah. Forgot how merciless this game was. Oi! Oi! 
I think I'm just gonna accept my fate and uh, <laughs> let's uh let's move on from this one, shall we? <laughs> oh, Mega Man was fun. I did spend a fair amount of time on it, but it, it was also that kind of frustrating. And guess what, boys and girls? There was no save game. You had to figure it out. All right. Let's hit into some load content and let's go. Da, 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 users. Me. It's a me. And we're going to head to the most. Um, how shall I phrase it? The most blatant marketing related game I am aware of there being. Now, I'm sure somebody's going to write in later and going, oh, no, 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 I got this one beat. But for those of you children of the 80s, you'll remember that everybody had a mascot. Everybody had a mascot. KFC had the Colonel. Wendy's had Wendy. And, and I mean, everybody had a mascot, including the Purdue chicken guy and Domino's Pizza had the Noid. The Noid was this weird creature that would show up in all the Domino's pizza commercials and in the most blatant marketing bid ever, Nintendo actually put together, a, or uh, Domino's actually put together a game based around their mascot called Yo Noid. <laughs> So this was the critter that you saw. Ah, the 90s. They gave you a thin little story and yeah. Only the Noid. So you went through your overland map, you went through your uh, worlds. You had magic scrolls for some reason. Don't, don't ask questions, just, you know, eat pizza. Um, <laughs> Why, why are you killing things with a yo-yo? Don't, don't ask questions, just eat the pizza. <laughs> what was the, uh... What was the combination? Because you ended up with uh, those scrolls. Like, if you notice in the bottom left, there's a little scroll with a snowflake. That was the special thing you could do. Um, that would yada yada the people off the screen. Uh, because again, for some reason, you, you, yes, you, you were a Domino's Pizza mascot that could do magic. If you picked up the scroll. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, Little Caesars, yep, they had their guy too. trying to look at chat and continue a side scroller um, and again since this game is from the 90s you see that the uh, the graphics are getting a little bit better I mean at least as better as you can get from uh, this end of things because again it's only an 8-bit processor You've only got a certain number of sprites that you can manage to load into memory. And by sprites, I'm not talking about the annoying things that say, hey, listen, that would come later. Um, <laughs> I'm talking about the graphical assets, because basically you kind of got the uh, illusion of moving by rapidly switching between, you know, a version of the character with the left foot forward and a version of the character with, with the right foot forward. Um, you've only got two kilobytes of memory, so you'll notice a lot of the textures are not all that varied. You know, look at that water. It, it is an ocean of sameness. Okay. And you'd continue through the world like that. And again, just like, uh, just like all the other games of that era, there were no save points. There was no picking it back up later where you left off. You had to get good enough that you could make it from uh, from area to area. I do really want to try to do this one because I, I want to 
Uh, there's one little bit at the end that you'll see why I, I really just kind of... <laughs> the game. Uh, I enjoyed playing it. I spent a lot of time playing it. I actually got pretty good at it. I never beat it, though. Um... Because that last level was tough, and reflexes have never exactly been my strong point. Um, my will save has been better. Oh, no. <laughs> but I always prefer the strategy games anyway. As opposed to the uh, the mindless button mashing, although I did have a few mindless button mashing games because you know what? There it is. All right. So yeah, that's what you're doing with all those scrolls you're collecting. Uh, although that is the pizza smasher. I died on the same jump, didn't I? Okay, basically, when you get to the end of the level, you enter into a pizza-eating contest. <laughs> it's a card game, a card-based pizza-eating contest with your arch enemy, who's another annoyed-looking critter that has stolen all the pizzas or something weird like that. And so you end up with uh, you have a number of cards from one to three to four to five, depending on what you picked. Um, and he's got a number of cards, and so he picks up a card and that says three, and you've got to either match or beat that. If you match it, nobody gets any pizzas. If you beat it, you get the pizzas. If he beats you, he gets the pizzas that are the difference between the two. And so you need to eat more pizzas than he does. And yeah, yeah, it's all the special. A lot of time was spent playing that game, more than I care to mention, because again, it was a nice little side-scrolling button masher kind of thing. Um, a little less brutal than Mega Man was. <laughs> um, but still, it, it was not exactly easy, and there was no save game, so guess what? Uh, when you hit the end, when you lost it or whatever, that's it, you lost it. Uh, I need to go to Dropbox. Got Mega Man, Noid, and one of the other side scrollers I definitely wanted to hit before I take my next break is Castlevania, the start of a franchise. Now, I am not going to go through um, all three Castlevanias, uh, mostly because I never played Castlevania 2 and 3. Uh, I played Castlevania 1 a lot, in no small part because my father, when he finally got a Nintendo of his own, was <laughs> he wasn't going to spend the money on a game until he beat the one that he had, and he was going to hold to it. Uh, Castlevania is not an easy game, y'all. So, yeah. He, 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 we played this for a long time. And it was years, years before he ever finally got around to uh, admitting defeat and buying more games, at which point he bought golf. Because he was going through his golf thing at the time. And let's see, can I time it? Yes! There's all sorts of hidden stuff, but again, it's your button mashing side scroller, no save, good luck, unforgiving, get some reflexes, and you are Simon Belmont, you're storming Dracula's castle, you're going through his minions. And <laughs> How did some of the save... I don't Oh, um, Zelda, the first one, didn't save, but you had some codes, if I remember right? Or maybe, no. Um, I can't speak to the first Legend of Zelda, but the second one actually had a battery in the game cartridge that would finally let you save. Um, it wasn't something that was all around across the board, 
but it was in later games they did finally start um, they, they realized that in order to do more complex games you'd have to have a way to pick up where you left off so they would do things like include codes that would get you back to a certain level so you finish level one and was the there we go Uh, you would have codes that would let you get back to where you left off, that kind of thing. can't believe I still remember where that was. <laughs> and eventually they, they got to the point where um, they, they'd finally start putting batteries in the game cartridges. Which unfortunately put a little bit of a shelf life on your cartridge too. Because... Um, when the when the battery ran out, when the battery died, that's it. You weren't saving progress. And these were games designed around the idea of you can now save your progress. Alright. Oh yeah. Your first big bad. This is not Dracula. That little Roman numeral 2 that I picked up was uh, a special thing that would let you throw two axes at a time. There we go. Gotcha. I'm actually kind of surprised that I'm doing better at this game than any of the other ones we've done so far. <laughs> Although again, given how many hours I spent playing Castlevania. Alright, time check. Uh, ooh. We are... that's one, that's two, that's three. Yeah. Alright, so that, that was the basic idea. Is use side-scroll, up and down, adventure, kill things, break things, find the hidden secrets. Talk to your friends, buy Nintendo Power, and learn about that secret little door right there that would get you the crown for the extra 2k worth of points. Watch as I start failing jumps because I'm realizing that um, I'm right about at the time that I probably want to go ahead and call this done. Um, it wasn't one on it. Because you have to hold up and hit attack in order to do your special attack. And that this is where you start realizing, you know, the game developers are going, oh man, we, we've got all these limitations. We want to do more than just two actions, but you've only got two buttons, so what can we do? Um, oh, I know. Let's do button combos. And you even saw that as early as Mario Brothers 2 and uh, Mario Brothers 3 where you'd have to start doing some hold up and do this, hold down and do that. And uh, I always hated this one. I'm not even bothering with the candles because timing... I know, I know. I said I was going to finish. I'm going to finish. In just a minute. <laughs> oh. I, I don't know who's getting more nostalgic of this. Me or anybody watching? Probably me. Almost certainly me. Oh, no. I didn't want that one. What I really wanted is one of the other specials that you could get. So you saw the axe. Um, you saw the boomerang at work. There was a another one that would let you throw vials of holy water. Um, that did a lot of burning against all these undead things that you were coming up against. Oh, oh. Here's your timing one. Okay, on that note, this is where I'm going to bring...